record. What is good, y'all? What's going on, guys? We're Embrace the Suck 21. Yes, we are. I'm Spencer. And I'm Daniel. This is episode 43 of the Embrace the Suck 21 what? podcast. Crazy. That's Richard Petty's number. <laughs> yes. You know, you know who Richard Petty is? Yes. He's the guy that's saying don't, don't back down, right? No, that's Tom Petty. Uh-uh. Richard Petty is the goat of NASCAR. Got it. Oh, he always had the cowboy hat, right? Yeah, cowboy hat and the shades. There you go. Yeah, so uh, he was on like Mountain Dew or something, <laughs> or some, like Slim Jim. Or is that? Yeah, that's the Ric Flair. Ric Flair. I don't know. <laughs> I'm plugged in on on on, on random '80s yeah. references, '70s yeah. '80s references here. What the fuck? All right. Uh, that's uh, a weird. But uh, but today we're going to uh, uh, talk about something that. Uh, uh, is quote very dear into our hearts is uh, rock and roll. Yes. And uh, what killed it? And we're basically we're gonna react to uh, a video from a guy that I follow. His name is Rick Beato. He's uh, a YouTuber that uh, like one of those you know old rock and roll heads. Um, does a lot of guitar videos, home recording videos, cool. ear training videos, and a lot of opinion pieces about. Modern music versus, you know, the classics. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to unpack. There sure is. Uh, um, I mean, before that, like, do we want to catch people up on stuff? Or Yeah, let's do it. I mean, this yeah. is going to be a, a lengthy podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead. Tell yeah. us why you're mad at Facebook. Why am I mad at Facebook? Okay. So, today, I was uh, trying to get some... Um, Get get an ad going for my my page to uh, get some traction for because I have some new original music coming out later this this month and uh, late last or last year like around April or May uh, that ad account got hacked via my PayPal account and I ended up having to shut it down I had to have it restricted but I mean I I didn't have any any uh, thing I was advertising because you know COVID, yeah. not a lot of gigs yeah. going on, so um, I, I I just left it alone for that, so while. many more months. But yep. then I got the bug back in me to make some new original music, and I want to promote it. But what and they every person on YouTube and uh, other uh, you know music uh, independent artist helper person, I don't know the exact term for it. Uh, dives into uh, making YouTube YouTube videos about Facebook and Instagram ads. Okay. And those are the best for. Those are like the lifeblood. Yeah. Of the local, like singer songwriter up and coming. Yeah. Band. Or or any independent artist. It could yeah. be any genre. Yeah. Um, but Spotify Spotify conversion campaigns is what they usually talk about. People like the Damien Keys, the Rick. Barkers, the those people uh, that talk about that, and I wanted to you know set one of those up, mm-hmm. but my account is blocked because of that hack, those all those years ago and all those months ago. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, I, I had I, I I put in a ticket to get it uh, fixed, mm-hmm. and I heard back from them. They unblocked my account. But then, like an hour and a half later, they reblocked it because of because they didn't have uh, certain banking information. I was like, why would they do that? Why would they unblock it, it and then reblock it? I feel like they're just too big. There's not enough actual humans looking at the shit. Possibly, it's like, it's like too many bots. Yeah, too, too many, many bots. bots. Like just not having common sense. Right. I mean, but they did ask for banking information. I gave them my my PayPal statement. My Wells Fargo statements, and uh, I still haven't heard back from them as of the time of this recording. I might. How long has it been? It's it's been today. Oh, okay. Today, uh, this is Wednesday, the twenty sixth. We're recording on, so, uh, <sighs> so it's unfortunate because it's like such an important step, uh-huh. such a massive opportunity that that you need to you need to get up and do it, but now you're waiting. Right. Right. Because you your hands are tied. Right. There's no way they're, to they're make tight. it go faster. Right. And granted, there are videos on how to make YouTube ads, TikTok ads, and Snapchat ads. But, you know, while the, all those companies are big, 
They're not as big as Facebook and Instagram. No. Nope. Or Meta, as oh. they're called now. Yeah. So I'm. It, it's frustrating, but yeah. I'll, I'll. We'll make it through. We'll yeah, man. It through. Yeah. I mean, but it, it. 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 It's like. They, the more, the more you need them, the slower they move. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. They've gotten too big for their britches. They'll they'll, they'll quickly block you. Oh, yeah. But to unblock you, oh, they'll drag their feet. Oh, yeah. They'll oh, drag yeah. their feet super quick yeah, or so that, super slow. Yeah, so that's my uh, that's my gripe. <laughs> it's, hey, man. Hey, it's, it, it, and, and on my end, there's not much to really catch up people on. I'm just slowly, piece by piece, getting the Embrace the Suck studio worked on and fine-tuned. Yeah, and, and it's coming yeah, along it, great. It's it's all right, man. I, I think we're going to have a, a good home there. Yeah, I, um, I can't wait. A home away from home. This yeah. is obviously the operating base. Right. But out there right. is the forward operating base where we have electric and exactly. internet. Yeah, and, and bathrooms. And, and bathrooms. And microwaves. Very true. <laughs> Very true. Um, yeah. But uh, other than that, man, it's just it's – just, Hanging on and, and trying to focus on making this year uh, uh, better. Yeah. You know, it's already starting great. Yeah, so. we're, we're, we're almost there. And uh, before we get into the meat of this episode, uh, just want to say we are so close to 50,000 subscribers. Holy shit, yeah, we are. And, uh, and as a reminder, at 50K, we will set up a live stream, hopefully better than the ones we've done. Now, hold on. Before we put our foot in our mouth, once we hit 50K, we will be doing... A uh, English breakfast, correct? English breakfast. I in that at fifty k guys. Not exactly at fifty k. Yes. yes. We, you gotta get us there. Very first. important. Yes. Because they're gonna be like, oh, fifty k. Where's the breakfast? Like, right. Right. We're not lying and wait with groceries in the bushes. Right. And right. looking at our our YouTube studio. Right. That that would uh, that wouldn't be good. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> it wouldn't. Yeah. So once we, we'll try to do it as a live stream, but we may. If we've had any success that we've had today, which is none, <laughs> Man. we may uh, do it as a video and then just upload it as a as its own thing. Yeah, yeah. Kind of and, Sam and, the Cooking Guy style. And then maybe for the treat, we can review it with everyone. Mm -hmm. We can do a, a – or we'll do a uh, premiere. Yeah, there we go. And then there we, we can be on it. Yeah, exactly. That might be an idea. Yeah. But this is going to be a pretty lengthy one, and it's going to be uh, very interesting to me at least. Yeah. Because I know I have my pre – Preconceived notions. Preconceived notions. Oh, you know, we can do that real quick before we jump in. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they attack this to the T. Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll do that, and then we'll buy some rad break, then get into the video. Yep. Um, what, killed, what killed rock and roll? Um – I think uh, uh, there's, I think a, a key ingredient to the death of rock and roll is lack of innovation, lack of creativity, having to fit into a box, mm. um, and like it, it just like I remember growing up small town North Carolina, and like rock and country weren't the uh, things that I listened to. It was hip hop because that was more real to me, mm -hmm. you know, than um, Nickelback. Nickelback or Kenny Chesney. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it became too uh, too polished. Yeah. It came too formul formulaic. I agree. I yeah. agree. I, I think that uh, what killed rock and roll is the, it, it just got too easy. Yeah. Like the the artist didn't have a story to tell anymore. Right. right. You know. Uh, then back then, let's say even classic rock. It's just it's it's a it was a struggle it was a grind and you could hear it in the music yeah and they it's like watching college athletes versus pro athletes yeah whereas college athletes are just grinding mm -hmm. hard as shit yeah whereas pro athletes they've already made it they're yeah. coasting right right and so a lot of a lot of I just can't <sighs> it's not a lot of rock and roll that's coming out these days that that hits yeah like. And, I mean, I mean, we've discovered a few great rock acts through yeah. Embrace the Suck, and they've been old though, not new. I mean, I, I, I think, I don't know too much about Sam Fender, but mm. like that that one song that he that we re reviewed at a time at the time of this recording hit hard. Yeah. So I, 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 I would say him, and not much, not too many else. But then again, they don't the the people that actually put out music music don't ever get the backing. Mm-mm. 
Yeah, it's like I was talking about earlier. You need to be a marketer. Yep. And, you know, you can do it on your own, but it takes a lot of money, Hell, a lot of backing. Yeah. And I think that may be a key ingredient, too, is labels and people who are signing the checks don't want to take as big a risk anymore. Yep. 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 And, and that's unfortunate, man. Yeah. And, and so it's... And the, I like the in parentheses. It wasn't hip-hop. Like, you yeah. can't... No one should ever blame hip hop. Yeah, hip hop its own hip-hop. genre. Yeah, it's its own thing. A genre can't tank another genre. Right, right. <laughs> it's like it's it's not even close. Yeah, it's not possible. In in fact, hip hop sampled a shit ton of rock. Oh, it sure did. <laughs> like, yeah, for a lot. Oh yeah. But um, anyway, like this is this is gonna be interesting. This is gonna be very informative. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's quickly pause for an ad break, yes. and then on the other side, we're gonna review this uh, Rick Beato piece. Yeah. All right, we're back. Sweet. Now, for those of you listening on the audio version, uh, you're just going to be hearing our uh, our commentary. If you want to see the full thing, it is on our YouTube page. Yes. The Mother Channel. That so. way you can know what we're talking about. All right, so we're just going to dive in here. Yep. I'm Rick Beato. This is Red Shull and Dave Honorado. Welcome to Everything Music. Today we're not going to trash guitar companies. We're going to talk about something that I like to talk about, which is what happened to rock music. Specifically, we're going to discuss how the loss of blues-influenced music led to the decline of rock as a worldwide music phenomenon. Now, I was born in 1962. Dave was born in 71. Rhett was born in 1990. When I was growing up, I heard the Beatles, I heard the Stones, I heard the Who, I heard Led Zeppelin. Well, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, all the 60s bands, Jimi Hendrix, you name it. All those bands were influenced by blues. Yeah, I had the same, pretty much the same references. Um, maybe a little, some later stuff like Boston and, and Van Halen and some of that, but those were all blues, blues influenced too. With the British Invasion, uh, you know, in the early 60s, like 63, 64, he had all those bands come over here. And at the time, you know, the poppy music in, in America was all surf music and uh, Motown and like Spectre's Wall of Sound. The British bands came over and had the blues influenced stuff and that's why they sounded so different. That's why I think everybody went so crazy about it because it was like, wow, what is this? It was like they took Elvis and they took Little Richard and, and Chuck Berry and all that stuff in the 50s and, and also a whole bunch of other blues records like Howl and Wolf and you know all the early B.B. King stuff, uh, Freddie King, all the Chicago Delta stuff, um, of course Robert Johnson and all the early 20s stuff. You know, they really were like fiends for that stuff over there. And also all those bands in that little microcosmic center, you know, between the Stones and the Kinks and, and all those guys, um, obviously the Beatles. Um, you know, they, list all, they all listen to the same records because they were all playing the same clubs. They were all passing the same records around going, hey, are you hip to this? Are you hip to that? You know, and if you read interviews with all those guys, man, uh, you know, they're all like, who was the coolest, whoever the cool, if you had the coolest records, you were the coolest person. Right. It didn't matter how, if you were good or not, you were just so cool that everybody wanted to hang out with you because you had those records, you know, and they couldn't get them. So, uh, I mean, even Keith Richards says that in multiple interviews, he was like, you know, I hung out with, with Jagger because Jagger had all the cool records. You know, that's how he met. <laughs> you know, they work on a train and supposedly he looks over and Jagger's got this thing of records and he's like, he's got Howlin' Wolf, he's got Jimmy Reed. He's like, who is this guy? I gotta know who this guy is. You know, and that's how they formed a the band, you know, so. So obviously it was such a small little microcosm of people that they all kind of influenced each other. So, but it was all the same records being passed around. And it was all the records that everybody here in the States weren't listening to. It was all right. artists that they had forgotten about, passed up, mainly because they were black artists, you know? And, and if you did hear some of that, it was by white artists who re-recorded songs, mm. Pat Boone and, and these type people who would re-record a lot of these blues tunes and make them popular. And, you know, which did somewhat help the, the black artists in some, if they were lucky enough to get some royalties, it did help them a little bit. Bo Diddley and some other people actually got some notoriety from white artists covering their stuff. But um, 
So basically you had these English guys who came over who were fanatics for blues artists. And when they came over, they couldn't wait to get here because most of the guys said they wanted to come and see the real blues artists. Well, they were also doing... Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, to think like in the 60s, like the big artists were like the Beach Boys, yeah, uh, the Supremes, yeah. and, and like there was surf type rock and like surf and bird was yeah. big then yeah it was and uh you know there's not a lot of blues and blues like that's a lot of feeling and there's a lot of uh yep. and like i remember um lo looking up that you know hound dog by elvis mm -hmm. was uh actually from big mama Thor thornton and it was vastly different than what uh what um the elvis version I, I think it's better you know yeah honestly so uh so that's that's interesting and and to hear him talk about like i hung out keith richards like hung out with mick jagger because he had all the cool <laughs> records <laughs> yeah yeah no that that's interesting it's like it's like rock stemmed from the blues yeah and then rock got too big for itself got very ego driven and said forget the blues it got us where we are now we can take it maybe this is foreshadowing <laughs> you know yeah. um and it just collapsed in on itself because it 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 didn't get the you know like the british man's got it right right yeah we like the the on this side of the pond we dabbled in it to get to the limelight mm. right and then forget about it. Yeah. And it was mostly black artists. Yeah. You know, that was another thing is, you know, um, good old fashioned American racism. Yep. Whitewashing well, rock and roll. Like, it hasn't whitewashed uh, rap at all. But, no. You know, these, there's still successful uh, black uh, hip hop artists, black, white hip hop artists, all hip hop artists of and, all. And I would say that that was the record labels, guys. Yeah. That let them appropriate that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you could get away with it back then. Yeah, and that's that's the record labels just are trash. Yeah, at least these days, like, they just well, back, they 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 came from just bad morals. Back then, it was a necessary evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's why I feel like because of the record label Elvis got was able to just step on all all those black artists that came yeah. before him. Yeah, because of the record label say, like, yeah, that's fine. We have no problem with it. Yeah, yeah. There's no way they can win. Exactly. Let them just take their music. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, we're yeah. good thing we're only 3 minutes and 44 seconds in. Yeah, here we go. Most of the guys said they wanted to come and see the real blues artists. Well, they were also doing they were literally doing blues too. Yeah. So if you talk about yeah. not just the Beatles, but you get no, get Stones, to Led Zeppelin, oh, the Zeppelin, Stones, I mean they yeah. yeah. They were oh they right picked uh, like <laughs> ten records and made careers out of them right and, and they're you know one thing I will say about that uh, most of those guys did acknowledge where they got it yes. from mm -hmm. and were like they tried to help the artists that they did take songs from sure and and put them on tour with them or at least try to shine light on them yeah and if they couldn't do it in America they took them to England and sure got people like Eric Clapton would would you yeah know, they would they would they have would these take, friendships yeah they took Helen Wolf and all those guys over to England and those guys over there became Became huge, you know, artists in England, uh, solely on the basis of that small microcosmic of like five, six bands going, "Hey, these are the guys you really should listen to." And so they were lucky enough to have enough money to bring them back, and sometimes and, and, and get them to play over there. And that's how they had their careers. And all of those guys, I mean, like Albert King, Freddie King, um, I, who I'm a huge fan of, all said, you know, if it wasn't for those English kids, we wouldn't have had careers. We would we would have died out in the '60s. And it probably would have never happened for us. So they mm. were able to kind of cultivate their careers up until you know the the nineties uh, wow. when they unfortunately started dying off. But you now know. there there was a yeah that that I, I'm I think that kind of started the whole you know Americans real American artists getting discovered over in the United Kingdom. <laughs> like yeah. that's where that whole thing started. Like interesting man. It was way before people like the Killers or James Taylor. Blew yeah. up in uh, in the UK. That's uh, it's, it's it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it, how do I say? It just makes sense to me. Like no shit. Like this is, yeah, yeah. I get it. Like you 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 pull from your the roots of the music. Yeah. And you keep your roots alive. Like you keep your the history of your music alive uh, through appreciation, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And and, and it it creates a, a symbiotic relationship. 
Absolutely. Between blues and rock. Yeah. Once you just are, if you just just take, you're essentially a parasite. Right. And that's right. not sustainable. Yeah, and they, and they at least you know they try they acknowledge where they got their influences yeah. from is and they told their their people back home is like, hey, these are the artists you want to be listening to. I mean that's super cool because yeah. that wasn't happening here. No, not at all. You know? uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, because it, during this time of the uh, British rock heyday, yeah. right? Uh, Motown was blowing up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So it, blues was dying here, mm -hmm. but Motown was blowing up. Right. So it, yeah, it's just the the country just focuses on different. Things I guess at one time it yeah. can't just multitask. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Oh. Definitely a bump in the road for rock music and blues in yeah. the early '70s with all the acoustic music that was coming out. Bands like Bread and America, but mm. there were still blues influences in 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 some of these bands. Jim Croce yeah. and, and yeah, Gordon definitely. Lightfoot and Jerry sure. Chapin. They they sure. still yes. retain blues. Yeah. Then you hit the mid seventies and you had disco, but immediately following that you had the punk movement and new wave movements. Right. And and you could argue whether you know, that was a raw form of blues. Right. You know, that was going back to the guttural, you know, I can't play guitar, but I'm gonna I'm gonna play three chords and I'm gonna scream because my life sucks and <laughs> I gotta do something. And it's the same principle basis of all the yeah, then, then, Well then we go <laughs> true. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's punk rock is like there you just really need fifth chords. Yeah. And uh, you know and move black hair and, dye. Yeah, yeah. It just goes like this. <laughs> It goes yeah. like this. It, and my life sucks because I'm in a small town in Ohio or Wisconsin or uh, <laughs> Iowa. It, yeah. No, that's... No offense. <laughs> <laughs> or Boston. Anyway, um, my thing is, it makes sense, though. It makes yeah. sense. Like, blues, punk, they're, they're, like, the message is pretty similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh, I want to get in trouble. Blues talent, the the artistry is next level. Yeah, I like, mean, at least, like, I feel like in the beginning, like, a lot of it was improv and just, like, you know, getting, just playing what you're feeling yep. at that time. Not so and, much lyrics. Yeah, and like, when, I'm, when I was in, in high school um, auditioning for jazz choir, like, it was, like, a lot of, uh, a lot of weird tonalities, and I don't read music, so I, I'm not able to pick up on that stuff it mm. was very hard and i didn't make it so it's like trying to replicate people just you know having it yeah you know and there's no rhyme or reason to it it's just what they're feeling at that time yeah you no can't that, and, replicate and, that, it. and, and it's kind of like punk it's like you can't replicate know. punk no i mean i mean you can it's just the everybody the, uh, there's all sorts what's the right word here uh all there is a way to punk. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just going to stop right there. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. Let's keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Go through the 80s. We're not up to where Rhett's been born yet, so you can't really talk about this. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, so then we get to the 80s, and pretty much most of 80s metal, starting with Van Halen in the late 70s, was still all blues influence. The Police, you know, bands yeah. like that yeah. even. Reggae, too. Were, were, awesome. were reggae. Uh, blues, yeah. And they had blues melodies. A lot, totally. a lot of Sting's melodies totally. were, were just blues melodies. And a lot of the riffs yep. Yep. were blues. And he, and, I, and, and he sang. You know, he, he sang blues. Right. He tried to sing like that. Yeah. You know? I mean, he even said, you know, he's like, I'm, he, I, it's funny because Sting was always like, you know, I'm, I, I hate the way I sing, but a lot of people really like it, so I must be doing something right. But he said, you know, I listen, he was a huge jazz yeah. musician. So, you know, he he listened to all the, the original Sarah Vaughan and all those classic blues and, and R&B and, and jazz singers. So, it, yeah, it all came from the same spot. So all the way through the 80s, almost every 80s metal band was blues influenced. Yeah. Um, and then you get into the early 90s and we have the grunge movement. I mean, in the early, you know, you have you have those transitionary bands like like Guns N' Roses that were very blues influenced and, and Jane's Addiction, things like that. Uh, but then all all grunge was, for the most part, all blues influenced because the guys were born in the early 60s, like I was. You had Kurt Cobain doing a cover of uh, In the Pines, Lead Belly. You had Pearl Jam doing Yellow Lead Better that is 
sounds like a Jimi Hendrix tune. I mean, a lot of Pearl Jam's riffs were right out of the blue, right out of blues. Their solos were blues oriented. Soundgarden's licks were blues oriented. A lot of Allison Chain's vocal melodies had had blues influences in them. Yeah. And then the mid '90s happened, and Rhett, Rhett was born early '90s. And maybe it has something to do with Rhett, but um, blues started to leave rock, and rock st stopped becoming a dominant force. I say around 1994 was the beginning of it. When I say dominant force, I mean that rock bands were big worldwide. In 1992, when Nirvana and Pearl Jam were at the top of the charts here in the United States, they were huge in South America, in Europe, in Japan, everywhere. They were a worldwide force. Today, when you think of worldwide forces, you think of people like Beyonce or Adele. 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 Those are, but who are both blues influenced right. singers? I mean, right. Adele. Yeah. And, and Beyonce both. In the 90s, you started to have bands like Dave Matthews, Hootie and Blowfish. And then right in 97, you started getting Limp Bizkit and Creed and the beginnings <laughs> of new metal. And I contend that new metal was, the, was, was devoid of blues influence for the most part. Not all. I mean, Rage Against the Machine had, was in the early 90s. Mm. And then they, they made the transition and then became Audio Slave after Zach left the band and they, yeah. they reformed. Wait and, a but they're all of what? Is that another rabbit hole we gotta go down? Wait, what? Audio Slave. Rage became Audio Slave? <laughs> My mind hurts. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. I predict they're not gonna talk about the Battle of Brick Pop at all. No. No. No, they, 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 they already did. Yeah. I think they already did. In the 90s, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I don't Oasis, think touch it. Blur versus Blur. No. Like, because they're missing a whole part of, of rock and roll they, here. They already touched on the Brit influence from the from right. their agents. So they're, they're talking about what's popular in America, not in other parts of the world. Yeah. Yeah, really. I because mean, during this time, or during his birth, shit was happening across the pond that... Yeah, that's, we're just finding out. Yeah, yeah, like the Stone Roses and the but, Smiths. But he's talking about global force. Right, global force. They were just, you know, uh, European force, I would I yeah, want to no, say. For, for real, since we didn't hear about them, yeah. they stayed there. We had our artists stay here. Yeah. There was really no global force of rock music. Right. Like, you had your Guns N' Roses. You had your Kiss. You had... These guys that could tour South America and, and Europe and and everyone know every word. Yeah. But he is right. There's a certain time where that just died. Yeah. You yeah. know. Uh, uh, I, I I don't know, man. I I agree with this though, because yeah. the people he mentioned, Beyonce and Adele, blues. There's bluesiness in in their their work. Man. Yeah. I mean, it's so true. I just, I just my mind just got blown though because I didn't know Rage became Audio Slave because I, I like Audio Slave. I didn't know that's where they went. I didn't know. I that thought either. they just stayed rage and without Zach, and they just kind of like, all right, we're just not going to put music out. Wow, that's kind of cool. Hey, man's got to work and, yeah. and and make great, awesome music. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Their riffs and rage were all blues oriented, Zeppelin esque. Lyrics. Yeah, that that whole you know, uh, Chili Peppers and, and Faith and More and those bands were all still derivative of. There was always that Zeppelin element somewhere. There was always a yeah definitely blues feel to them but when Rhett was was starting to and when he was a kid and you had all these you started getting all these early 2000s faceless bands the puddle of mud chevelle other bands we won't mention bands where you didn't know any of the people in the band well the other the other thing too is by the time i was like becoming a conscious human being and realizing what music was in the mid to late 90s that's at the first major movement in music that I remember were the boy bands 98 degrees in sync backstreet yep. boys you know I was in third grade fourth grade and and those were the records that kids around my time were talking about and those same thing those are pretty much all devoid of any influence of blues you know or, or talent. And so but the way <laughs> or I or talent or talent <laughs> yeah I, I relate to that that's that's he's yeah. around the same age as me so and, and, that's, and that's why I hated music uh -huh. It's like you got Mbop topping the charts and like, there's no hope. Yep, there is no <laughs> there's hope. There's no hope. It's gone now. Yep.
Uh. I grew up, my parents, the first music I remember listening to in the house were the 70s and 80s funk bands. Yep, so yep. Earth, Wind & Fire, Gap Band, Cameo, Rick James, yeah, yeah. you know, which is very heavily blues. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So yeah. when I started getting into music on my own, fruition and started finding out what I liked, I went straight to the blues. The first uh, record I ever bought with my own money was the Jimi Hendrix blues compilation, which we were just talking about is, yeah. is kind of a hodgepodge of, of Hendrix stuff, but that's what led me to, I mean, literally I remember where I was the first time I heard Red House off yeah. that record. Oh, I, yeah. I can take you back to the yeah. exact spot. I was like yeah, 12 yeah. years old in the back of my parents' car with my Ooh. little, so. What's yours? What's your first record that you bought? Um, that I bought? Mm -hmm. um, probably have to be uh, "Away from the Sun" by Three Doors Down. Uh, that was that was that was like contemporary. That was I after them, the Kryptonite. But I liked know? them though. Yeah, they yeah, were not yeah. bad. They were pretty well put together for a short time. Yeah, you yeah. Know? When they were, you know, up there, yeah, and I yeah. I remember buying uh, the Beatles one. Uh, Garth Brooks Ultimate Hits. Um, what else did I buy? Um, a couple other country stuff that I can't remember. Maybe like Kenny Chesney. Um, Even though you were into hip hop, that I was mean, your first album. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you bought. I I I three bought, doors down, and then you bought Kenny Chesney. Yeah. In the the same what FYI like where um, would where'd you buy? Um, yeah, I I I had to my. How would I put this? Um, I had to buy what uh, my my mom would allow me to. Yeah. So, uh, like, I would only be able to listen to hip hop around my friends. Yeah. And like, my my brother somehow got got a hold of some stuff like burnt. Yeah. And burnt Napster. Uh, Na was it Napster? Napster. LimeWire. Yeah, and LimeWire. That was just coming up. Yeah. Like, that's that's how I was able to find. Uh, People like Nelly during yeah. that time and uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and old, uh, old school Kanye before he went crazy. Yeah. And uh, like whatever Jay-Z was putting out at that time. Yeah. That's crazy, man. And Outkast. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. <laughs> what about you? What about your first? My first album that I bought with my money was Bob Marley's Greatest Hits. Nice. And I bought that from Costco. From Costco? It was a massive like CD collection. That Dang. Was, that was my first purchase. And then after that was uh, Temptations Greatest Hits. Nice. Those are my nice. one and twos. Other than that, I don't remember because then I could just get everything for free. Yep, yep. Because like, <laughs> LimeWire. Because LimeWire. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Sony CD player, and it blew my mind. And that's what got me into guitar. Hendrix got yeah. me into guitar. Yeah. You know, nobody in my family's a musician. I didn't come from players or anything. And it was that which kind of opened up my world. I can remember the lick that started guitar for me, and it was Albert King, Livewire Blues Power, 68 Live record. My father had it, and I would I heard it, and I just was like, what is that? You know, it was like this bomb going off. Same with, yeah, Red House. I had the first two Hendrix records, you know, just, just mind-blowing, you know. And as a little kid, you know, you're, you're, you're innocent. So you know that stuff is true blue, man, because it cuts <laughs> yeah. through the BS. Yeah. It's like, yeah. as a kid, if you know, if you hear something go, that's it, yeah. that's it. Yeah. It's like, there's no, you, you don't have a formed opinion. You just, you're so blown away by like, what is that? You know, so it's like, you know, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff is like, man, okay, for life. I mean, you know. Because well, it's vocal. It is, it's and, all vocal. And if we go it's back and trace the origins of the blues. I mean, it goes it goes all the way back to slavery and field yeah. hollers. I mean, right. when slaves were picking it's cotton. It's pain, man. It's, it's, it's pain. out of pain. Yeah. And yeah. it's a uniquely American thing. You know, yeah. blues and then from blues, jazz. I mean, the, that all comes from probably the darkest time in American history. And so that's yeah. why it's, it's it, it, is it, what resonates it, is. it resonates with everybody. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but that's, that carries true to like everything. The most beautiful things come out of the darkest places. Absolutely, yeah. A lot of great stuff. I I hate to say it, like came out of the pandemic for for us. Yeah. Like, just being cooped up, not being able to do anything. Yeah. I I met me personally. You know, we discovered this. Yeah. And I discovered you know live streaming, uh, sim racing, 
uh, and like home recording. I was yeah. discovered that, dude. Yeah, what, it, 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 but it all stems from like, you know, it's the way you th- see things. I put it that way. It's the way you see things. Like, you look at the shittiest time. Like, yeah, it's the shittiest time, but you got awesome music out of it. Yeah, yeah. Music we wouldn't have if everything was fucking rainbows and gumdrops. Right, right. And I don't mean to compare, you know, to that time. Uh, you oh know, no, the forties, fifties no, to uh, to now. Like <laughs> they, I don't mean to compare that. it like that. Yeah. But, but um, like he there, he was talking like uh, the first blues riff that he heard. I finally remembered like what got me to want to play guitar. Yeah, was, I don't think we've ever discussed that on the channel. My dad had a DVD of uh, Eric Clapton's one one guitar, one road, one whatever it was. The live BDD. Every time he would come home from from work, you know, he took these long business trips. But every time you come home, who put that on and Dave Matthews Band listener supported. And the first time I heard Sunshine of Your Love, you know, yeah. I was like, I fucking love that. No. Yep. Yeah. That's, I mean, hey, man, that's cool. Because like, I was wondering, I was like, why not piano? Why not drums? Why you could have gone any way. I could have. I could have. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. There's uh, music is so eclectic, man. Yeah. I just yeah. That's it's always interesting, man. It's always interesting to see where you got the spark from. Yeah. You know. But that's that's, that's where I got it from. <laughs> the, the, put that down in in stone. The, the whole reason I bought my guitar is because I heard Jack Johnson on the radio, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, he's massive. I'm like. Do that. <laughs> like, how the fuck is he massive? Uh-huh. His surfboarder that that broke his back is now the massive guitarist. Not a massive guitarist. Like, like, uh, he, selling records. Yeah, he, he writes songs that people like listening to, especially <laughs> yeah. on a beach with a margarita. Yeah, in hand. I'm like, wait, wait, this is just good time. I was like, mm-hmm. all right, well, shit. Yep. <laughs> now you're making yeah. construction uh. working and reacting to videos on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> that line that you just played it's it's so painful and soulful yeah and, and that's somebody crying that's, right. that's somebody's soul being like I can't take it anymore and I gotta just you know yeah. let it out and that's what it is and I think and I think you know that's kind of partly what we're talking about here is that music now it's plastic it's not that it's there are people who are trying to do it I'm not saying that's oh, yeah. everybody across the board there are really good bands doing some of that but as a whole, especially commercially, it's right. like that's been taken out of the that that element is gone. It was almost like the corporation said, you know what, that's real. We don't want that, right? Because yep. that's oh, yeah. that actually has some human element. We, right. you know, it's like it's it's the whole you know. Human. I mean, really, the whole EDM movement is devoid of of any blues. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and a- facts. Yeah, it's electrical dance music. Electronic dance music. Yeah. Yeah, like what the like? Of course. Mm-hmm. There's no blues in yeah, that. No. No feeling. No. It's all computer generated. It's all keyboards. There's some uh, some of it I do like, but you know, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the electronic music that's pop music is devoid of blues. It's sure. all been auto tuned. Right. Everything is is been. There's no human element. Has been right. stripped of of its There's humanity. No, right. Right. And. Right. The if you want to look on on a commercial is as far as commercial success, the most successful artist in the last ten years. You look at Adele, for example, yeah. that is really especially the first two albums. You know, yeah. they are the, all blues melodies. Yeah. It's Aretha Franklin. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's and it's, people wonder why did t- Twenty One sell ten million copies? And I was like, well, it's, yeah. it's a blues record. <laughs> it is yeah. rock. People still like the yeah. blues. It's it's right. yeah. It's 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 Aretha Franklin, Franklin, Etta James, uh, you know, uh, Tina Turner. It's all of that element. It's that you know, and she knew that. I mean, you can tell by her voice before they slicked her all out. She brought it. You know, people were so bombarded with other plastic garbage that that's just totally came out of nowhere you know people are like what is that you know it's blues man it's real it's like that's the element that we we all kind of gravitate toward because we know it we you know every human being has had crappy days gone through pain has been pissed off it that's man that's what music is and you express that out in your in music and when you take that out of it what do you have (laughs) Yeah, I, I would say, Rolling in the Deep, 
That fucks. That fucks I, to this day. I'm I'm just I can't. But yeah. <laughs> with Adele? Yeah. You don't fuck with Adele? No. I appreciate her. And uh-huh. I like her music. Well we did easy on me. Like yeah, you but, liked that one. Yeah, um, but it's like it's it's good music, but I just It doesn't relate to you. No, because I'm a oh, I'm a oh, overly positive person. Right. You know, even right. when the shit happens. You know, I just, I don't have enough. There's not enough blues in you. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. I could sing about pain, but I'm like, I couldn't do that. That's not my, that's not my soul sound. Right. You're definitely the more optimistic of the two of us. Y- yeah. I just, I'm, I'm the one that has the. But, but I, 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 it's not like I don't like her. She is massively talented. Uh huh. It's just, if I had a choice between. Adele? <laughs> and, like, I don't know. And, and God, a, a Godsmack? Or yeah, whatever. Godsmack. Uh, I'd go, go Godsmack. Because I don't go sad, I go angry. Right, right. I don't, like, I don't know. I, maybe my channeling's broken. But <laughs> I just, I, I skip sad. There's no time for sad. It's anger or joy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But, no, I mean, it, 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 it dude. Yes. Yes. There's that, no feeling. No, but it's so true. Music these days is just plastic. Yeah, just plastic. bullshit. You have this just plastic Muzak garbage in the background Muzak, for a commercial. Yeah. So if you if you look at artists that have been successful in the last, let's say, 18 years since 2000, you talked about people like John Mayer that have that have a lot of you know, blues elements. Obviously, I mean, he's a blues guitar player. Right. Yes, try the John Mayer Trio record. That fucks. I do. I do dig John Mayer. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think I was? Mm. I, I, I do. Dig, I do dig John Mayer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Justin Timberlake. Yes. And, and Beyonce. By, by proxy of Justin Timberlake, Chris Stapleton. No. You yeah. Know, a lot of these oh, yeah. modern yeah. country guys. Um, uh, are Sturgill Simpson. Yep. You know these guys yes. that are kind of not taking over well i guess stapleton is in a way taking over country music and sort of leading the the force of taking it back from bro country yeah you know, he's, he's kind of in the forefront of turning it at least 180 and going okay look we got to get back to something which realistic. which is going back to that same thing you know i think part of the big and it's hard to say country music is declining because it's still so commercially successful and there's still so many people that are selling records all these major artists but these songs don't stick around long term because they're super polished, super commercial, super safe. I think that's really what we boil it down to. It that's what we're talking about. If you know, right around the time that blues left rock, or is also around the time that the internet took over and the music True. business yeah. took a Pro took Tools a hit. Took over yeah, everything. and yeah. so there's a correlation there in my mind where now industry executives and record labels are saying, well, we have to play it safe and we know this sells. We know this polished, auto-tuned, shiny thing sells, but we're not sure if this raw, you know, So they don't want to take a chance. They don't want to take a chance on it. So people listen to, you know, by people I don't mean like musicians, people that like dig into music. I mean people that just listen to the radio in their car and buy whatever's on top 40 or listen to whatever's on top 40. They're going to listen to whatever you stream on their FM radio. And so that's why some of these artists are so popular nowadays is because that's all the mass, the masses are hearing is this super polished pop thing, which is devoid of a lot of soul and feeling with some major exceptions. Bruno Mars, right? Mm -hmm. Bruno Mars especially his live show is, is like kind of James Brown. I was going to say it's kind of James Brown. And, yeah, like a Prince kind of thing. Right, right yeah. exactly. Prince, you know, the but those artists are still popular. Yeah. Like, you know, Aretha Franklin, all these, these artists from the 60s and 70s are still popular and new generation, like, man, I found the blues and I found rock yeah. and, and stuff when I was a kid who was born in 90. I was definitely not alive when any of that stuff was first popular. But I found it, and it's had such an influence on me because of its prevalence and because it's its power. Yeah. So one of the other things that happened in the 90s was in 1996, the Telecommunications Act of 1996 that Bill Clinton signed, which essentially 
made these mega corporations took over all the media. Right now, it's probably about five or six of uh, these mega media corporations that control all, everything that we read, watch, and listen to. And this homogenization of music began right at that time. That's the time period, 1996, and I'm talking about. Yeah. That mixed with, as Rhett just said, Pro Tools. And when you get Pro Tools, you got Auto-Tune and then Melodyne. Mm -hmm. And then you started to have, and that happened really the transition when everyone started using Pro Tools was right around 2000, yep. 99 to 2000, when the Mix Plus system came out. Yep. For those of you who don't know, uh, do you know what Pro Tools is? No. Pro Tools, it's like um, the quote-unquote industry standard for uh, digital audio workstations. Oh. Um, like, I use GarageBand, which, uh, uh, I, I, like, like these, I, I can't compare it to any other uh, digital audio workstation or DAW for you uh, audio gearheads out there. Uh, but but I've, I've worked with it on... On songs about nothing, on bad poker face. Uh, my buddy John Brooks uh, used those, and like, there's a lot you could do to clean up a track, to make everything succinct with each other. Like, like doing multiple tracks is easy to do with that, and and with all other digital audio workstations these days. So does that mean you can walk into a studio being less skillful and still produce polished? craziness yes you can yeah. um so. i mean like i i remember totally butchering a guitar solo and no offense to john like i love him to death uh he said you know just do a couple more takes i'll piece something together and instead of you know me having to i i wanted to get it right you mm -hmm. know but at the same time like time time time, time. is money yep and uh Money is not something I had at the time. Yeah. So. Uh, it, it's a great tool. But instead of a great tool to be used sparingly, yeah. it got overused. Right. Which right. needed, which, which meant a lack of, you could have a lack of skill in your trade. Yes. Right? Right. Uh, and so that's, that's where we see these, that's where I see the, the music now. I'm like, how the fuck are these guys on the radio like these guys don't have to worry about money ever again right and then there's people that are just like that busker yeah yeah that with all this fucking talent starving yeah yeah um the telecommunications act i didn't know that part uh this is is this, this fcc band. shit i'm not sure i it might be i don't know because then that could yeah the fcc it, it was well around way before <laughs> 1996 it was around in the 80s. But like, it didn't apply to certain things, right? No, I don't think so. Uh, uh, I don't know. Let's, let's yeah, see what they have yeah. to say. And then you started to have the gridification of all music, not just rock, all pop music. Everything was tuned. Everything was put to a grid, a time grid and a pitch grid. Yep. You can't have blues if you are on a pitch grid. You can't. No. There's you, nothing perfect in no. blues, man. <laughs> no. Nothing. Why would you want perfect blues? And if you hear perfect blues, you go, that's not blues. <laughs> right. So it's, it's, it, you can't do it. There's, I mean, like a perfect example, I always tell people, like, would you really want to hear a Stones record corrected? <laughs> no. no. Put on, someone's <laughs> probably done put, it. I'm put sure. on Exile Main Street and, and correct oh, it. Oh, God. What do you got? I mean, it's oh, like, come it makes on. Makes me cringe. Right. So right there, you take out the human element. So those two things, the corporatization of radio. playlists radio. With, with these, of, of radio with these huge companies like Clear Channel and uh, Cumulus mm -hmm. that, okay. that took over and bought up all these radio stations and then would have one person programming all the rock stations. For example, yeah. Yeah. take with the human element. Get rid of a DJ that actually has Taste. some hipness and like, hey, I want to hip people to some new stuff. Oh, you can't do that. Do you remember in, in back when Bittersweet Symphony came out yeah. and on 99X, yeah. the, uh, the DJ played it eight times in a row. And that was a... They built that song. Th exactly. They, they that, that was a... I remember yes. driving in my car when that happened. Yeah. And Axel was the DJ. Yeah. And he said, wow, I love that song. I'm going to play it again. Yeah. Then it played it. He goes, I'm going to play it again. He played it eight times straight. They Bittersweet Symphony. Individuals... Leslie Fram that ran 99X yeah. here, she took chances on bands. I mean, not just 
not just major label bands on local bands. Either. No, that that was the to me that was the last station that somebody tried to be like, you know what, we're going to try to do it old school and let the DJs dictate some stuff and let management dictate what's going on and let the listeners dictate what's yeah. going on. Hey, call hey, in if you like this song, call in and we'll play. I would, if not, I we'll... would, I would pay, I would pay a radio station. To be like that again. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, like, somewhere you could just old school call in, request something. Or, or tweet at them even. You know? Ugh, even yeah. that would be great. Um, the last two things I can remember of that type of uh, radio, uh, lo- lo- the bridge between radio and local music being there was two examples. was 98 Rocks, Noise in the Basement, which... Um, every Sunday they would feature a local local act, lo- a couple local acts, and then Monday they would, they would play at Auto Bar in Baltimore. Um, you had to sell tickets for that. It was one of those deals. Yeah. And then a couple years before that was DC 101's Local Licks. That was on Sundays. Then that's when uh, bands were given a chance. Uh, but there's nothing like that mm-hmm. anymore, at least not with uh, – and, mainstream rock. And I'll put it this way, man. A radio station now doesn't have the same reach as someone that has a Spotify playlist. Right, right. You That's know? like it there's influencers and you know, they can share their Spotify playlists. Yeah. Yep. And and then like we we've just kind of discussed in pub yeah. in private, like we have like several ideas what we want to do with ETS twenty one and that's something that we discussed like just in passing is like a radio station. Yep. A branch uh, off, guys. ETS twenty one is going to say ETS twenty one, but but as a, uh, a side project, a future project. Yes, but yeah, we're, we're not going away from yeah, podcasts no. and reactions no. anytime soon. <laughs> not like other um, reactors. <laughs> but, no, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's a good point. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, the corporatization definitely uh, uh, kicked rock in the it's, nuts. It's funny, man, and in all their music, it's just like another tentacle of 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 just the one percent controlling what we can hear and listen and find yeah don't stir up the 99 percent how yes. you know what i mean like don't yeah. give them real music give them like shit to go to sleep on mm-hmm. give yeah. them mind numbing bullshit right <laughs> you know keep them docile yeah Something like that. Yeah, it's, it's just man. I'm not gonna anyway. go that deep, but hey, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. You don't have that. You know, when you when you homogenize everything, that's just what you get. Well, I remember. You know? So I was young, but I remember '96 rock. Yeah. Here in here in town, and I remember the day it changed from '96 rock to Project Nine Six One, which was like, you know, yeah. new metal, new metal station. Right, right, right. And then a few years ago, they even dropped that to now it's Power 961. And it's right. a Billboard Top 40. So now there's not even good stations around. And, and 96 Rock was like a cornerstone rock station yeah. here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I moved here in 90, years. that was the big rock station. Right. It was like, if, if it was on 96, it was that was it. You know, in the 70s, when I was a kid, there were stations in upstate New York, like WCMF in Rochester, that... You know, bands like Rush wouldn't exist if it wasn't for all these upstate New York dude. and and places like Cleveland that were WMS, along. That's the buzzer, dude. They broke yeah. Rush. They, in fact, they made their career, and they they even say it in a lot of documentaries that it was like if it wasn't for WMMS, we wouldn't have been anywhere near because it was a one DJ. He played the first couple of things and he kept playing it. He kept playing it, and he didn't. You know, he just was like, I just really like this, so I'm going to keep right. playing it. <laughs> and within two weeks, man, they were like on tour, and then they they started. They got picked up by a management company, I think, and then they toured with Kiss, and all, they started open up for a bit. So yeah, it, strictly because a DJ yeah. was cool enough to go. You know what? This deserves to be on the radio, and if they're going to let me play it, I'm going to do it. Yeah, you know? and we don't have that. So what, we have, what really, we have now is we have all of us, all people searching the internet to find cool bands. And no, I mean, there's stations that do, but if you really, you really got to dig. I mean, you really yeah. got to dig. There's no, syndic- now, there's no syndicated channels. No, no syndication. To, 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 to find these people. It's right. all like indie shit. Right. There's no... Like, influencers are the new DJs. Yeah, man. TikTokers are the new tastemakers. <sighs> like, if, if you can't make a dance to a, a song, like, it ain't going to get played. Yeah. If you can't shake your booty to it, and you're gonna get fucked. Oh, yeah.
Spotify is is yes. the modern. It's the one station to rule them all, yeah. essentially. Yep. And whatever spot, I mean, now you know, because as someone like I'm in working in the industry, like with bands who are trying to break, and yeah. the thing what everybody's going for now is to try and get placed on a Spotify playlist. Right. Like that's yep. the thing. That's, that's the new. That's the new radio. That's yeah. the new spin on a radio. Is man, if I can get on this top forty playlist, or if I can get on this whoever playlist. Yep. I, I know of people who are in bands that have built tours around yeah. Spotify plays. I yeah, mean, there's yeah. a, a band, Wolfpack, who's an amazing funk killer band where they actually gamed Spotify a couple years ago where they put out a record of 10 tracks that were all silent and no, no music on them whatsoever. And they reached out. They had a relatively small fan base at the time, I think. But they told everybody to just put it on and let it play. And they made, I think, like over $20,000. <laughs> and funded, they funded a whole tour where I think, I hope I'm not butchering this, but every show was free admission for their fans. No shit. And it was that's game Spotify system. You know, brilliant. Me. That is brilliant. I, I'm sure Spotify has changed it so that you can't do that anymore. Oh, my God. It, it's it's like the equivalent of YouTube where you make eight-hour rain videos and you have them play. I couldn't imagine that. Ten songs of silence. Ah, uh, that's the real sounds of silence right there. Holy crap. <laughs> that is punk rock I as love fuck. it because then it's not like, what's happening with them? It's like, what's with my device? <laughs> and let me try it again. Let me try the next song. Why is it all quiet? And so they must have gotten a bunch of plays because what the fuck is this? Or you just put it on at night and go to sleep and have it on repeat and you played the album like 10 times. Well, well what happens is what if, what if you got something, right? What if you got something and you go to play it and there's no sound? You think it's your shit. Yeah, yeah, that, you think it's... You got to corrupt it something. Yeah, yeah, you think it's on your end. So you're going, let me listen. There has to be something. Let me go to the next track. It's still quiet. What the fuck? You yeah. go to the next. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's it's, it's genius. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, oh my yeah. god! Because then they just needed like a hundred million people just to stream it. Stream ten nothing songs. Yeah, <laughs> and their album is funded, and you, you, you oh can my let god. them into the gig free. Oh man, that's, that's a boss move. That is brilliant. Two tactics to do you know to, who that is you know, by the way? Right. Make it happen. Who who they reference? Voltec, or Vol Vol is it Voltec or Volpack? Volpack something. I don't know. We should do a reaction to them. Yeah, Because that's yeah. a boss move worthy of a reaction. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean that tactic in itself. That's old school, man. Yeah. That's like oh you yeah, know, it's like okay, well, how how are we gonna make it happen? You know, it's grassroots. It's so there again. It's back to the blues. It's like strip it all down. What really works? What you know. And I, I don't, I'm not under the belief that people don't want to go see live music. I get a lot of right. people, oh, I don't, you know, but nobody wants to go see live music anymore. That's why it's dying out. And you got, they got too many distractions. I think at the end of the day, if it's handed to them right and it's something that's genuine, they'll come see it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yes, there's an element that won't. There's an element that's always going to be sitting in front of the computer and it doesn't matter if you pay them $20,000, they wouldn't leave the house. But, right. But, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. People Man, appreciate authenticity. They do. They do. And so, there's yeah. a, there's an authenticity about most live music, and especially bands that are keeping that blues influence alive. Bands like Alabama Shakes. Yep. You know, oh, uh, even guys like Jack White, who who yeah. has had he's built a huge career on three or four different bands that are all blues. Yeah, Rack and Tours, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dead Weather, his yeah. solo stuff, The White sure. Stripes. Those are all blues bands, right? Well, and Black Keys. Black also. Keys, oh, yeah. yes, Black the, Keys. they're a blues band. And so going back to what we were talking about earlier, that sort of tradition of American bands going over to Europe because Europeans appreciate music, and especially American music on a different level than we do here at home. Yeah. Kings of Leon, Black Keys, these bands went and broke in Europe and yeah. then came back over like right. Hendrix did. Dude, I yeah. mean, uh, like the Rival Sons. Rival Sons. I mean, I, I used to go see them, uh, you know, eight, ten years ago, and they were, you know, 50 people at the show, right. and now they're selling out. They're opening up for the Stones. Yeah. You know, they just opened the last Stone store, and, I mean, they're killing it, man, and well, they deserve it because they're, they're keeping it real. They're keeping it traditional and my you know. my friends i'll give them a shout out tyler bryant and the shakedown they're doing mm -hmm. the exact same thing yeah. you know they're they're killing it and just spending so much time out on the road and they just put out a really great record but yeah they go over to europe yeah okay so it. so is 
That is why I am making it a goal of mine one year to tour the UK, Ireland, the rest of Europe. Because I know y'all will appreciate it over there. America, like, a few people do, but yeah. uh, it's yeah. mostly muted. And they're not all in the same place. No. The, the people that appreciate the music aren't ever together. Right. And the right. same night. They're right. always like, you have one, you have three, you have two. They're never all in a show yeah. that appreciate music. Yeah. I love each and every one of you that are, but <laughs> I can't get you all in the same place at one time. <laughs> yeah, right? That would be epic. It would be, but oh well. Yeah. Oh, oh, didn't mean to do that. All right. We'll cut that part out. Yeah. Is there really hope for rock music to become a worldwide force again, though? There's two schools of thought the way I see it. One school of thought is, A, because of the internet, because of Spotify, everyone's so fragmented now. Everyone's yes. in their own yeah. little niche. They have your yeah. own playlist of your own stuff. And so from that perspective, through that lens, then yes, you can say, well, no, it's nobody's ever going to have a Nirvana again. The other thing to think about is between now and 2020, in the next two years, there's going to be another, I think, three to five billion people that are coming online for yeah. the first time. Right. So this internet pool that everybody's swimming in now is about to get a lot bigger. And yeah. so for bands that are on Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube, YouTube is a huge you know, yeah. platform yeah. for music and for people discovering music. I mean, think about... Um, that Korean artist a few years ago, uh, Psy, who had <laughs> yeah. that massive gang of style. Gang of style. Yeah. I mean, that that hit because of YouTube, <clears throat> right. right? You know, right. we're we're on YouTube right now. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah, which shows what I mean. Honestly, like we believe in this platform. I believe yeah. in this platform. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's a viable platform. So, in my perspective, I think it you could, um, but I think the more likely answer is things are going to continue to be more fragmented. But again, from a, a, as a musician's perspective, even if you have a, a smaller slice of that pie, even if you never are a Nirvana, you know, they're on YouTube right now. There's a billion users that come on. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm, this so. is, a, this is a segue into this issue that I've had that people have talked that heard me talk about which is the blockers of YouTube. I've done this series called What Makes This Song Great that you, many of you watching are watching because of that series. And um, I have these bands like Fleetwood Mac or Queens of the Stone Age, both that are blues influenced, that yes. block these videos that I make that are essentially telling people a that this is for them. commercial for right. their music. <laughs> And there's and a lot of the bands that I can't make videos of, like Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, uh, the, these people that are blockers of YouTube. I mean, Prince has really been a blocker, and yeah. and uh, you know, I mean, now is it is it the artist or is it the lawyer? Well, we don't know. I've I've talked to I've talked to record labels this yeah. week. I've talked to publishing companies, and honestly, they don't know. I talked to a publisher this week, uh, major yeah. publisher friend of mine. Yes, it's a I talked huge to a senior. Layer of the onion. Yes, that's a huge layer of the onion, and it's it's not it's that this is he is preaching to us like those of you who keep asking us for certain uh, reactions like that's there are reasons that we have a Patreon yeah is that you could see these videos YouTube won't allow this well YouTube will play it safe and yeah. quickly block it right even if they're not sure what the fuck's going on they'll block it yeah we've tried to upload. Re Beatle reactions, yep. we've re uh, like Jimmy Carr reactions, they've been blocked, but they're on Patreon. And if we fight it, we'll get a strike probably. Yes. And we're too young and too small to get a strike. Yeah, it's a double edged sword. Yep. So, yeah, so thank you, Rick. <laughs> Uh, um, I would venture to say it's, it's, and they don't know. It's the legal end of things. No, I think it's I think it's the artists are really? telling them. Yeah, because everyone makes deals. Led Zeppelin was one of the last groups to come mm -hmm. on Spotify and come on Apple Music, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and allow and they don't allow anything on YouTube right, right. that's not sanctioned by them. So I think it's specifically the artists. I may be wrong. If there's any of you artists out there that are watching this, Jimmy Page, if you're out there. <laughs> We love you. Yes. Yes. Please come, come on the show. Please yeah. let, let me do a, a proper video on on how great Led Zeppelin is. Okay. Anyways, and bring your burst so we can play. Yeah. <laughs> please. <laughs> yes. Please. Please. You know, I thought about this overnight. We filmed the video last night, 
And I started thinking about this morning that uh, one thing that I left out of the video that we didn't talk about that I was personally involved with is how A&R people at labels starting around 2002 or so when the music industry started to really began on its steep decline as far as their revenue model was concerned is that A&R people would hire producers to not only write the music with the bands but even write the lyrics and perform some of the music. I would be hired to play on records, help the people write the songs or co-write the songs. And I would ask the people, why don't you just find people that could write their own songs? Why don't you just sign artists that could write their own songs? And mm. that seems like a really obvious thing, but that's not what happened. Money. They would find people, they bring in producers and say, you're going to write with this 50-year-old you know, producer, you're going to write, the artists are going to write with them and these people are helping them write their lyrics. I mean, it was ridiculous to me. And I said, just find people that can write their own music like you've, that has always happened. So it was that. And you had this new metal movement had the same couple producers that produced all the records. You had the same mixers on all of them and you had the same few producers that produced all the records. Labels did not want to take a chance because if you signed something that failed and you spent a lot of money on it, you lost your job. You can look up who these people are. And I always wondered, I wasn't one of these people. I didn't make all these records, but there's a couple producers that made a lot of the records in the early 2000s. They all sound the same. They were made with the same amplifiers where they were made with the same songwriters. They had the, they would do four bars at a time. They would loop it. And this whole assembly line of rock music began to happen, where all the stuff was auto-tuned, all of it was gridded, all the drums were gridded to the 16th note, and all the soul was taken out of the music, including the blues, the lack of blues. You can't have auto-tune and blues together. It yep. just does not work. So I just wanted to add that other piece of this and say that that was uh, no question part of the decline of rock music. Anyways, I'd like to thank Dave and Rhett for being my guests and remind you to subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in my Beato book, which helps support this channel, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com and you can find it there. Thanks for watching. All right. Um, that was two thumbs up, man. That is no uh, question. Two thumbs up. I know that's not a reaction. It's a podcast. But right, still two right, thumbs right. Up. But yeah, it's like it was uh, the basis of our our podcast. podcast, and it's you know, I, man, there was a lot of great points in there. Hip hop wasn't mentioned one time. Hip hop was not mentioned. Um, um, but yeah, I, you know, the corporate takeover of music, the wanting to play it safe, like a lot of stuff we talked about in the beginning, like. Like, no question. Like, that's what killed rock and killed, like, you know, music in general. Like, like they mentioned, you know, a few artists that went over to the United Kingdom and Europe and made it big and then came back. It's kind of like one of those, I need a job, but you need experience. How do I get experience if I don't get a job? Right. It's kind of like that. Like, go break out somewhere first and then come over here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I really think there's a deeper layer to unpack that he just mentioned and this is something i've been piecing together with our 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 copyright claim material yeah if you look at the copyright claims it's always some weird ass backwoods label from south america that's claiming right content and i'm like yeah what yeah like i've never heard of this label and i'm like could they have had a, a, a piece of the main puzzle, like a small piece, where they could actually go in and claim it? Like, let's say they remaster something. Yeah. Whoever remastered that, under the label, owns that song now, right? Yeah. In, in a very dumbed-down version. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's because I'm seeing these old songs that we're reacting to get copyright claimed by this label that it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, no. if I if if we're reacting to to uh, let's say Oasis, uh -huh. right? Just for instance, yeah. Copyright claim, something something South America. Like, what? The yeah. fuck? It doesn't make any sense. 
Yeah, that's weird. It, it, the, the copyright, people who copyright claim our shit aren't the bands. They're no. never the bands. Or mm. some shady dude in, in, in fucking Argentina with the space bar. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's what I, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah. But, or, or maybe it's just like, I, I, I can see both sides of the argument. Like, maybe there's just not as many revenue streams for these artists or these people making the TV shows. Because, like, like uh, music and movies and entertainment is, you don't have to pay as much money for it anymore. No. If any. Yep. Like you can find a lot of it on YouTube. Yep. You can find it on Netflix, yep. Spotify. It's all, it's all cheapened. It's because been cheapened. Because it's ad-free. Yeah. There's no ads anymore. We pay for that. Right, right. Or and, or you pay for it with your identity. Yep. And, like, if you do, ads are tailored to you. Yep. So. I, I just I, I just feel like, oh, it'd be one thing if an artist was like, hey, guys, I understand that you're reviewing this. But the music is mine, but we'll split. Yeah. Because it's our opinion. Right. Of their music. Yeah. And and a few, um, you know, videos we do do, like, are sharing copyright. Yes. So, and that, that's I think, only because of our song. Right. Uh, well, it's because we're, you know, adding to it. Yes. Yeah. It, like, it's like, it, it's counted the same as a cover song. Yeah. Like, I, like, when I posted uh, uh, my cover of Oasis's slide away and the slade merry christmas everybody oh, those shared? were shared oh, wow yeah yeah that's so we cool. still made money like uh, when we reacted to the green day bohemian rhapsody crowd that's shared yeah and i think that's 100 percent fair that's 100 percent, 100 percent. you know because it's not it's not like we need all the no no you gotta give the money to the bands when it's due i just wish i could see the money go to the bands yeah yeah not I wanna... to some f- fucking rat somewhere right like because it's not the bands right and 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 that's that's always been my platform even with that guy 24 7 give the bands the money they deserve Uh uh-huh don't give the middleman shit because the middleman isn't doing a goddamn thing right right except being in the middle and being in the way Mm -hmm. that's all he's doing right i i agree but unfortunately it just doesn't work that way well at least it's moving in the right direction I, I sure this, hope the, so. Well, the whole thing is, like, labels are losing their... Their their, their stance. Their, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. They're losing their power. Yeah. And the grip is, is loosening. Absolutely. And pretty and soon I, we're uh, going to have this revitalization of music. I sure hope so. It has to. You yeah. know, the one thing they didn't touch is that how, like, music is cyclical. Cyclical? You know, yeah. Like, it like, cycles. Like, it, everything is old as new again. Yeah, like Bruno Mars. Bruno that's, Mars. That's kind of his whole platform. Yeah. He came out because, and everyone loved him because he was fresh. He was different. Yeah. Even but, though he was old. He sounded yeah. old. Yeah, yeah. They'd heard it before. They just didn't know they had heard it before. Yeah. And that's, yeah. it's all like a cycle. Yeah, but even pop punk's coming back. I like, hope. Mach- Machine Gun Kelly and Olivia Rodrigo. Are... Talk about the, 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 you never could have paid me to see, if, hey, the forerunners of this new pop punk movement, who are they going to be? Machine Gun Kelly. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like, yeah, a rapper yeah. and a Disney uh, person. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, l- let us know what you think in the comments. Definitely. What what, what killed rock and roll? What killed entertainment uh, in general? Yeah. It's just, this is fun. It's it good was, to, yeah. it's, it's going to be a long one. And it's going to be a long one. If you've stuck around this long, we appreciate you. We <laughs> love you. you. <laughs> and uh, thank you all for liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting that bell, and sharing with your friends. Definitely. Till next time, wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck. And get out for a while, guys. Create an adventure. We'll see y'all in the next one. Later.